protein is made in a cell. What we studied last time was called transcription. I'll do a brief review on that and I'll ask you some questions. That was very weird. You want to talk some transcription? Heck yeah. Okay. I got a mess up here is what I got. All right. Interesting stuff here. So, let's get rid of that. That's AP stuff. Let's just mark this out. All right, you ready? Thank you. This is DNA. Mm -hmm. DNA has nucleotides that code for something. Ten points if you can tell me what those nucleotides code for. This is code for making something in the cell. Ten points if you can tell me what it's code for making. Peach correct. Blue correct. What is DNA code for making? Oh, are you Herbal correct? I know. I was just that. Orange correct. What are we Anyone else? Yeah. Green correct. Alright. DNA codes for making proteins. These are proteins. So how does this make this? Is what your next essay on the next test is over. How this makes this. How does it do it? I'm going to show you. It's in two processes. It's called transcription and translation. Let's talk about transcription first. That's what we went over uh, last time. The RNA polymerase is a molecule, an enzyme, that attaches to a site called the P site. Ten points if you can tell me what P stands for. The RNA polymerase attaches to this P site. Blue correct. Orange correct. Peach correct. Green correct. Are you sure? Purple correct. Okay. We're coming. Bring it up. Bring it up. Bring it up. 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 White correct. Okay, this is called, back up here, this is called the promoter site. Scott, are you with me? This is called the promoter site. The RNA polymerase attaches to the promoter, then it slides down here and opens up the DNA. And then one by one, it takes RNA nucleotides and attaches them to the DNA chain. These blue ones are called RNA nucleotides. RNA is different from DNA. RNA has ribose as the sugar instead of deoxyribose. Also, RNA has U, uracil, instead of thymine as a base. So it would be AU instead of AT? Yeah. Um, it would be. It would be AU instead of AT. So... If the DNA is T, C, A, A, G, C, then the RNA strand is, T goes with what? A. C goes with what? G. A goes with what? U. A goes with U. Because RNA doesn't have T, it has U instead of T. 
G goes with what? C. You see? I see. Trevor, that's hilarious. You see? I see. Thank you. What goes with C? G. A G U U C G is the complementary strand to this DNA T C A A G C. Blake, you good with that? Thank you. And this will then detach. The RNA polymerase just continues all the way down until it reaches the bottom. The terminator. Here I'm a terminator. That was a big movie in the 80s. And then the, and then the RNA polymerase falls off. And then the mRNA detaches and exits the nucleus after some processing, which I'll talk about. And the DNA closes back up. So that, they just open the plate of coffee and then close the back That's up. right. And now we've made a copy of the gene. Except when it codes back into more RNA, it replaces the U with the E. That's right. Replaces you with T. Does this make sense? Are we good with it? Allie, go back there. All right. So what, what, what do we got to do here? First, we have to process this mRNA strand. It can't just it can't just leave. By the way, in eukaryotic cells, there's a nucleus, a nuclear membrane. That little hole there is called a nuclear pore, and the RNA has to get out of the nucleus and go to the ribosome here. However, before it can get out of the nucleus, we got to do a couple things. We got to put a guanine cap on one end. We have to put a polyadenine tail on the other end. Many adenines in a row. Just put them on there. I don't have any more. Oh, there's another adenine. Put it on there so you get you get about 150 to 200 adenines added at the end. You get a guanine cap, and there are little enzymes called spliceosomes that crawl up here and they remove parts of the mRNA that aren't necessary. And then you're left with the final piece of mRNA. So the cap and the tail are put on before the spliceosomes? They all kind of do it at the same time, I think. The cat's put on, the tail's put on, and the splicesomes do their job. I think that just kind of all happens at once, like, around the same time. Remember, these are molecules just kind of floating and bouncing around. So, when the enzyme happens to bounce around and hit and remove the pieces, that's when it happens. It's not like, it's not like there's a guy waiting and here comes in and then he goes and does it. These things are just, they can't see anything. They're just bouncing around and when they run into the they things, pay. they do their job. What's that? They will pay. Yeah, it just, it's, it's automatic. It's just when it, when it hits it, 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 it tears the pieces out. So could you get really unlucky and just not have it bounce into anything? Well, if it doesn't bounce into anything, it won't be able to leave the nucleus and go to the ribosome and make its proteins. So would you just get really unlucky if that happened? Well, it just never happened. Well, if this thing doesn't go make us proteins, we're going to keep transcribing more and more mRNAs until it gets done. So eventually, the molecules are going to hit one another and do what they should. The cell makes enough enzymes where the collisions are going to happen. How y'all doing? Do you love biology? Yeah. All at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> That's the first time we ever did that. That was fun. <laughs> All right. So now the mRNA is going to leave the nucleus. And this is what we're getting to today. It leaves the nucleus and goes to the ribosome. Now, it's too hard for me to move around <coughs> all these pieces at once. So what I've done is I've made a model where they're all connected by string so that I can just drag it out of here and drag it to the ribosome, which is where we're going to make the protein. You see the ribosome over here? Drag it down here, and now we're at a ribosome. And this is where the next part occurs. You know what we call this next part? Translation. 
where we translate the code. <laughs> I misspelled it. Spelling. Translation, where we translate the mRNA code into a protein. Here's where we actually will put the protein together. Okay? Lucy, how are you doing over there? Great. Alright. <laughs> so, we need to know what to call everything here. What's this long piece called again? mRNA. Do you notice that our ribosome, the red thing here is the ribosome, do you notice it's also made of RNA? Mm -hmm. We call this rRNA, which stands for ribosomal RNA. Ribosomal RNA is the ribosome, rRNA. And there's another bit of RNA that helps us make this protein. It's these things right here. They're called tRNA. tRNA stands for transfer RNA, which is, is a type of RNA that carries these things. You know what these things are? Ten points if you can tell me what these things are, and I'm going to give you a hint. They help make the protein. These little round colored circles make up the protein. Ten points if you can tell me what these things are. They're carried by the tRNA. They're transferred by the tRNA. Ten points if you can tell me what they're called. I have to keep this steady. I don't know. Bring it up here and set it up here. So the tRNA transports the mRNA? Nope. Or does it Hold on. Let me get this question answered. Orange correct. Blue correct. Anyone else? Coipel? correct? What? What are these little things? What are they? Go, go. I'll give you a hint. They make up a protein. Anyone? I'm just going to trust you. We're coming. Look at me giving you hints. So the RNA is the... It's the ribosome. You can just set it on the podium. Is that just Wait, the word it's the ribosome? Or is that the... Is that RRNA is what the ribosome is made of. Oh. Got it. Green correct. White correct. Peach correct. Look at y'all getting stuff right. Heck yeah. Okay, so these th circles right here, they're called amino acids. Amino acids. And they're what make up the protein chain. And they're carried by the tRNAs. Now, each tRNA has a three-base sequence on the bottom of it. We call that the anticodon. The mRNA is also in three base sequences that we call codons. The anticodon of the tRNA is going to match up with the codon of the mRNA inside the ribosome. This is what you're writing for me in your next essay. The tRNA has an anticodon that will match up with the mRNA codon. A codon is a three-base sequence. This codon happens to be AUG. AUG is always the first codon in a protein. Um, always? Always. It's called the start codon. Wait, what, what's the start codon again? AUG. How does it do that? Just does. So the codon and anticodon match up. That's right. So if you take a look here, look at this chart that scientists came up with. This is about a hundred years of experimentation to figure out this chart. Can you see AUG anywhere on the chart? Uh, yeah. There it is, right there. It codes for methionine. MET is the first amino acid in every protein. 
It's because this mRNA cannot get in the ribosome unless it starts AUG. If it starts AUG, the ribosome will let it in. And then what happens is these tRNAs, they're just floating around, and they'll float into the ribosome, and maybe, if they have the right shape, they'll bind the anticodon with the codon. But that one there doesn't have the right shape. So it just floats out. And then another one will come in, and it'll float in, and that one doesn't have the right shape either. And so it floats out. And this will continue to happen until one with the right shape comes in. Check this one out, y'all. This one's got the right shape. Heck yeah. See how it has the right shape? Because its anticodon matches this co this anticodon matches that codon. This an this codon is AUG. Can you guess ten points? Can you guess what the anticodon is of this tRNA? And I'll give you a hint. It's something that matches AUG. What matches AUG? What matches AUG? Wait, then what does he do? Blue correct. What matches AUG? What three letters? Yes, orange correct. White correct. Purple correct. Yeah, what matches AUG? What anticodon on the tRNA would match with AUG? So they have the complementary base pairs. Yes. The anticodon is complementary to the codon. Anyone else? You got it. Peach correct. And green correct. Good job, y'all. So the anticodon on this tRNA is UAC, and that matches with AUG. And you know what amino acid this tRNA is carrying? It's called methionine. Uh, Met. That's the name of the first amino acid of every protein. Methionine. How do you spell that? Methionine? Mm -hmm. Methionine. Meth is always the first one. We used to joke in college. It always starts with meth. <laughs> Drug joke. Start every start. Always start with meth. That'll get you going. <laughs> Terrible, isn't it? Drug joke. Wait, so it made me remember. Methionine is the first amino acid of the um, mRNA. Yes, methionine is the first one. Then. Guess what? After that one's in place, the next codon is open. <laughs> and the same thing's going to happen again. tRNAs will float in there and try to bind until, that one doesn't fit, until one floats in there that fits. And it just so happens that that one fits. See how I made it fit? It took me hours to make my models fit. Y'all need to appreciate this. <laughs> While y'all are out playing video games and having fun, I'm making models fit. And once those two fit, now we have two amino acids side by side inside the ribosome. And they will form a nice bond between them. That bond is called a peptide bond. A peptide bond. The two amino acids here. Skylar, hang with me up here. This amino acid and that amino acid form a bond between them. It's called a peptide bond. And that bond binds the two amino acids together so they will not come apart. Now they're bonded together. We're starting to make a protein, y'all. Sam, how's this stuff? It's good. You getting this? Yeah. Now the ribosome is going to move down one codon. And this is cool. Watch this. 
the first tRNA exits and floats away and will pick up another amino acid, the same amino acid as it dropped off earlier. This tRNA can only carry this one or this one. It's the same kind. <coughs> And the process will repeat itself. So proteins are just mRNA with extra amino acids? No, a protein is just amino acids. Oh. They're formed using RNA. So then what happens to the RNA, RNA mRNA after? Hold on, we're going to get to that. The, uh, the tRNAs come in and bind. That one doesn't fit. How about this one right here? How about this one right here? That one does fit. Another bond, peptide bond forms. Ribosome moves down. First tRNA leaves, goes and gets another one, the same kind as it dropped off before. Next, codon is in the ribosome. Another tRNA comes in. Y'all watch this. Binds. And it fits, the, the anticodon matches the mRNA codon, peptide bond forms between amino acids. Oh, they all bond again. Uh, Ribosome slides down, this tRNA leaves, goes and gets another amino acid, the same kind it was carrying before. Each tRNA is specific to a certain amino acid. Don't pay attention to fear. This is on your next test. So they make a chain, even though the tRNA leaves, they're still attached. They're still attached by peptide bonds. We're almost done. tRNA comes in, drops off, uh, attaches its anticodon to the mRNA codon, peptide bond forms, ribosome slides down. This tRNA can now leave. It leaves the amino acid where it was because the amino acid is bonded. It'll go get another amino acid, the same kind it dropped off before. We're almost done. There's one last codon at the end. This one happens to be UGA. Any Georgia fans out there? UGA is what? Look up UGA on the code. Okay. UGA is a stop codon. Where? Oh, UGA codes for stop. And what that means is it codes for a special factor called a releasing factor that floats in and binds with that last codon. I always remembered UGA as a stop codon because I'm like, stop. I don't want to hear it because I went to Georgia Tech. Heck yeah, UGA, no good. Heck yeah. See, you could remember it like if you were a Georgia fan, you could remember like, stop. Our defense will stop you. But they won't. Or it could be like, stop ranking us. We're not that good. <laughs> Just a joke. Anyway, um, the uh, as, as the stop factor is reached, it causes the ribosome to move down one more time and open up and break apart because we're done, and this tRNA to leave. And voila, this comes off, and look what this is. You know what that is? Protein. We made a protein. Heck yeah. Now, I only have five amino acids up here. In actuality, you might have three, four, five hundred amino acids in a protein. And that protein will fold into its final shape. And now we've got a protein that can do a job in the cell. Maybe it sits in the membrane and lets stuff in and out of the membrane. Remember those membrane proteins we talked about? Yes, sir. Maybe it's one of these enzymes, like um, RNA polymerase. That's a protein that carries out this job of transcription. There are hundreds of proteins in the cell. There are thousands of proteins in the cell. You actually have about 20,000 different proteins. Actually, no, I'm wrong. About 100,000 different proteins in each cell. And they're all coded for um, in the DNA. They're all made this way. Yes. 
Yeah, so our, our final protein will not just remain a string. It will fold into its final shape. What happens to the mRNA? There's the final shape. Great question. That was the one you had earlier. I like that question. I just couldn't get to it at that time. What happens to the mRNA? It can go through another ribosome and make another of the same protein. And it can do it over and over and over again. This ribosome, this RNA, can make hundreds of proteins. So until the cell dies, we're just adding more? Well, at, at some point, the RNA, mRNA is broken down by enzymes. There are special then, enzymes that come and say, you've had enough, sir, and they'll destroy it. What happens to the, um, the ribosome that gets broken apart? The ribosome will uh, okay. will come back together over another piece of okay. RNA. As soon as what happens is a new RNA will come up and it will bind, because it's AUG, it will bind to the big unit and then the small unit will float around and hit the big unit and close up and, and now you can make a protein. So this thing just kind of floats around until it's hit by mRNA in the cell. These are good questions. That's your essay. How do you make a protein? Transcription, RNA processing, translation. It's a long essay. It took me two days to tell it to you. That's the essay you're probably going to have to write on the next test if you roll a one, two, or three. It's an essay you will have to write if you roll a one, two, or three. So it will get through as many times as it can before the adding tail falls off? Well, that's just hypothesis. <laughs> yeah, that's the hypothesis. That's not yet proven. Would you like to see video footage? Heck yeah. Video footage. Here we go. Nucleotides. Each transfer RNA molecule recognizes only one amino acid, which becomes bonded to the top of the transfer RNA molecule. That's a tRNA. Located on the bottom of the transfer RNA molecule are three nitrogen bases called an anticodon that pair up with messenger RNA codons during translation. Watch it. As translation begins, the first codon of the messenger RNA strand attaches to a ribosome. Then, transfer RNA molecules, each carrying a specific amino acid, approach the ribosome. When the transfer RNA anticodon pairs with the messenger RNA codon, the two molecules join. Often, the first codon on messenger RNA is AUG, which codes for the amino acid methionine. AUG signals the start of protein synthesis. The messenger RNA then slides along the ribosome to the next codon, where a new transfer RNA molecule carrying an amino acid will pair with the messenger RNA codon. The two adjoining amino acids then become joined by a peptide bond, and the first transfer RNA molecule is released by the messenger RNA. As the process continues, a chain of amino acids is formed until the ribosome reaches a stop codon on the messenger RNA strand. First one, the AUG um, tRNA. Yeah. The first one leaves and the other one stays until the new one. That's right. Okay. More video footage. MBL. This is a good one. Virtual cell. Translation is the synthesis of a protein from an mRNA template. This process involves several key molecules, including mRNA, the small and large subunits of the ribosome, tRNA, Watch video. and finally, the release factor. The process is broken into three stages, initiation, elongation, and termination. Let's see the process in action. Eukaryotic mRNA, the substrate for translation, 
has a unique three prime end called the poly A tail. mRNA also contains codons that will encode for specific amino acids. A methylated cap is found at the five prime end. Translation initiation begins when the small subunit of the ribosome attaches to the cap and moves to the translation initiation site. tRNA is another key molecule. It Watch contains this, an I'm antigen talking. that is complementary to the mRNA codon to which it binds. The first mRNA codon is typically AUG. Attached to the end of the tRNA is the corresponding amino acid. Methionine corresponds to the AUG codon. The large subunit of the ribosome now binds to create the peptidyl, or P-site, and the amino acyl, or A-site. The first tRNA occupies the P-site. The second tRNA enters the A-site and is complementary to the second mRNA codon. The methionine is then transferred to the A-site amino acid. The first tRNA exits, the ribosome moves along the mRNA, and the next tRNA enters. So this happening fast? Yep. That's about 10 per second. What? It's like the hot dog breaks. 10 These amino acids per second. Sausage. <laughs> yeah, sausage. <laughs> As elongation continues, the growing peptide is continually transferred to the A-site tRNA, the ribosome moves along the mRNA, and new tRNAs enter. When a stop codon is encountered in the A site, a release factor enters the A site and translation is terminated. When termination is reached, the ribosome dissociates and the newly formed protein is released. How good was that? Pretty great. Yeah. So good. Told ya. All right, 10 points. 10 points if you can answer. <coughs> A, what do you call that? B, what do you call one of those? And C, what do you call this? A, B, C. Ten points each. You can get 30 points if you get all these right. A, B, C. Is um, B just the one thing on the Yeah, one thing, excuse me. A, B, I don't know what I'm doing. C, was it A, B, C, A, B, C, it's a chain. B C what one you guys switch? A B Oh what you switched it up, right? C only one of those things on the Okay C B Wait you switched it. Yeah, you switched it. Watch now. B you switched it. C I'm not switching it. Uh B used to be the B used to be the top thing and C used to be the bottom. Are you serious? For me for the finish. Hold on. Two right for me. You should have done it. I didn't even see it. You see, you can like tell when you. Nope. You can tell. I felt it. It was like right there. So there's this girl. Oh, great.